a splendid residence that found its roots in the year 1200, rises above an idyllic Italian village. This grandiose castle with its medieval tower has seen better days. Yet, the property has now lost its dignity due to a scandal in the past. The only inhabitants at the moment are colonies of birds which are starting to migrate to their next nesting site. This palace was initially the home of a noble Italian family that lived there for several centuries, enriching it with numerous works of art and making it a splendid art gallery. The former castle was transformed into a Renaissance villa by Mr. Camillo, a successor of the Count's family in the second half of the 1500s preserving its austere and medieval character, accentuated by the tower and a typical castellan shoe-shaped plinth. The last one who owned the palace was Count Luigi. On his death in the early 1800s, the villa was inherited by other counts, who sold it again in the start of the 1900s to Mr. Angelo. He kept it in excellent condition until his death in 1950 and from that moment the house fell into a progressive state of decay. There followed a period of so-called balotaggio between different owners and in the end the villa came into the hands of a well-known painter who named the building in honor of his wife. Thanks to the inspiration of the new owner, the building had undergone a notable recovery and had once again become an art gallery. Together with his wife, the painter lived a prosperous and prestigious life inside the castle until a tragedy happened in 2014 that changed everything in the blink of an eye. In November 2014, gardening work and interventions were taking place in the park of the property. Two of the workers of the family, architect Grazioli and former bricklayer Giambattista, were giving instructions to fell the tall trees because of a risk of falling, without having received any authorizations by the owners to do so. Suddenly, the tree to be felled given away and had hit on both heads of the workers. The two suffered from fatal injuries to the skull and were crushed on the 20th of November 2014 under the tree they were trying to uproot. Turning the building's beautiful history into an everlasting grim and sinister tale. Due to imprudence, incompetence and negligence the painter and his wife were both charged for manslaughter. It was from then that the historical building ultimately lost its fate and has since slowly sunk into the elements. Ignorant of the story before my exploration, I am going to take a look here today and take you inside a castle where the masterpieces of this Italian painter can still be admired.
So welcome back everyone on a brand new video of the New Italy series. Here I am and as you can see this might not be a video as you normally expect from us. As this place is not stocked with a lot of furnishments. I'm currently in a desolate Italian palace. This was once the grand main hall. And nowadays it just lies abandoned. I think it's been abandoned for a severe amount of time already. You can see all the wallpaper around me peeling off as well. But you can still let your imagination run wild and think about how majestic this place once was. I'm still excited to show you this place. There are not going to be that much details because there are things left, but not plenty as I mentioned. But still, it's going to be a great tour with great architecture and of course paintwork because that's where the Italians are always so incredibly talented at. So let's start this exploration. So I will just slowly give you an overview view of this grand main hall where I just started this new video. We can still see some beautiful paintwork at the sides right on top of there and still some lamps hanging up. I think in the middle once was a grand chandelier but that one is gone. It's so sad at this place. It's just a victim of neglect now. Because I can only imagine what a grand place this once was. And now let's go behind these doors. And right behind is actually already my favorite room of this palace. Have a look. Wow. Dang. The ceiling is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful paintwork. And all these arcs inside of the ceiling design. Absolutely wonderful. Sadly enough, there is another chandelier that has fallen down on the ground over here. It was once hanging up right above me there. We still have a table in the middle with some crystal on this plate. And you can tell <laughs> the dust on this table is incredible. We have a picture over here of a person that was donated an award. So yeah, maybe he did something good for the municipality here. And then look over here. The nickname of this palace is the Palace of the Painter. Whether there was really an Italian painter living here, I don't know, but... There are still all the tools for painting. And then a beautiful upright piano. It's still quite in a decent state. Some keys are broken, but for an abandoned piano, it's not too bad. <laughs> I've experienced way worse pianos. Also still some things standing on top. Over there we can see a frame of the Pope. You can also still see some marks of where the paintings or portraits used to hang on these walls. I think the most impressive thing of this palace are all the ceilings inside this place. Absolutely beautiful and very old, you can tell. Now look over here. I just saw the person on that picture that was donated an award. There are plenty more awards right over here. 
Artista, so oh, new art promotion, yeah. He was a painter, or she was a painter. Pitura, wow. Some encyclopedias, another trophy. Stringa Ugo, I don't know what it is, but I have to find out about that. And look over here, another photo of the former owner with a trophy in his hands on a competition ship. Oh my, wait a second. I'm not yet sure, but I think this is inside of the actual palace. Because look at the door. It's looking quite similar to a door I've just seen. Now, if that's the case, it once was a glamorous place. And then the next room. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely unique and totally different from that other one. Have a look on this ceiling. All these people over there. We can see old hunters, people with horses and carriages. Beautiful. And then the walls are where they've also painted all these persons. Luckily, at least over here, the lamb is still hanging up. Only some parts of it have fallen down on the table over here. Oh, that's a very old Singa sewing machine. I think that was its cover. Always these beautiful big mirrors inside of these places. Over here was the secretary desk. Chair still up front. Also have a look at the beautiful curtains above the windows. And then I'm continuing. Yeah, those are just some basic rooms until you look to the ceiling again. Wow. Looks like those people were mostly dedicated to religion. Where is the table standing? Full of plates. And other stuff. And this was once the main door. I will just quickly show you how the entrance looks like. They had stairs over here. And they once would have made a grand entry inside of this palace. And then the next room. Oh wait, what is this? Oh, this is actually an Italian poem inside this frame. I'll look over here. The reason I'm still showing this place is because I think the paintwork and architecture are absolutely beautiful. This is definitely not something I see every day. In other countries like Belgium or France, it's very uncommon to find paintwork like this. And that's why I love to come to Italy. Also, of course, because I love to show you a little bit of variety in places and types of places. Now look at this. This is another room with incredible ceilings again. Wow. And all the concave shapes. It's incredible. 
This place is genuinely very old. Look at this very old. Yeah, I think it once was a bed frame, but it looks like they used it as a sofa in its last days. We have a beautiful stove over here. Wow, what a piece. That's a very old one. Also a huge column on top of it. I think that was leading to the chimney above. The ceilings are absolutely gorgeous. I keep on mentioning it. Where we can see some more personal pictures of one of the last families that lived inside of here, I guess. <laughs> Even the door is painted over here. What's behind it? Oh, just some shells. Now let's go through this door. Damn, the clothes are the doors are closing up very loudly inside this place. Oh wow, this was once their kitchen area. And the calendar date over here says 2011. So that must be the date of abandonment. That's not very long to be honest. About 10 years, and this is how the place is looking afterwards. Dang, look at the stairs over there. They're close to, coll to collapse. I really like the fireplace. And I think from this point, it's mostly gonna be a walkthrough. As there are not that much details anymore to point out, I believe. I haven't been in this area yet, so I'm gonna check it out as well. Dang, what a portal. Completely surrounded by vegetation. I guess this part was their shed. Wear some stuff for gardening. Let's quickly check what we can find over here. Oh, all right. I was not expecting furniture like this over here. But furthermore, it's quite empty. What was this used for? Maybe to clean the chimney? There are so many rooms inside this place. It's a place huge in size, to be honest. Wow. We have some very antique chairs over here. Well, <laughs> and you once could walk to the upstairs over here, but I definitely do not recommend doing that anymore because it's very risky. The floor is even 
collapsing over there, a huge hole. To renovate this place, it would cost a lot of money, I think. And I think, sadly enough, that's also the reason why this place is just sitting here, being abandoned and forgotten about. Money is always the problem in Italy, at least very often. It's always crazy to see how nature is starting to grow inside. You can barely imagine that this was once just lived in by people. It's always such a strange contrast then versus now. I think when these people lived there, they would have never expected that their grand palace would end up like this. Dang, you see that? Electricity is still transmitting. What the heck? All right, that's strange. I hope this place will not catch a fire because then it would be gone forever. If there are no costs to renovate this place, there would never be costs to completely rebuild it. Still a bicycle standing over here as well. Wow, look at this. I really like this coat rack. There are angels on top of here. Dang, what a dump. Well, this room is a junkyard, full of clothes and just stuff thrown around. But, as you can see, we can go up these stairs over here. Oh, I've checked this area out yet too, because I always do a quick scan if I'm safe, no alarm inside. And of course, what's the most interesting to point out for you to make this documentary as beautiful and complete as possible? And I have to admit that this floor is in a very dilapidated state and there are not that many interesting or furnished rooms. But there is one beautiful room where the nature is also conquering the battle. Well, where is just a bot room? Those were the stairs going up in the other part. By the way, I feel cobwebs all around me. So no, not many people have actually walked on these floors. Old religious chair over here where they would pray on. I really love the windows, I don't know why, but... It's actually quite unique how that ivy is just growing outside of it. As you can see, very dilapidated. And it has been very much decaying in those last decades of vacancy. What I do really love is this mirror over here. I think it once used to stand on top of a desk. Well, this was once a bedroom of them. Where we have some old photos, let's have a look at some of them. Oh, it's taken in a beautiful palace or something. I see some columns and a statue. A 
is a very dark photo. Can't see anything in it. This one's taken in a garden or something. And there is also still a television over here. Maybe this was the room of a child. Well, still some cupboards standing over here. An old vanity. And they once put all their records inside of here. All their LPs for the record player. That door is also just close to fall down. <laughs> Dang, not a bad room. And it's so tall. Looks like this used to stand in a church or something. Well, to be as thorough as possible, we have another bathroom over here. They placed the mainstay here because you can tell that the ceiling is also close to fall down. And right next door, there is another beautiful decadent room. And as I'm standing here, we can hear the church bells ringing in this beautiful and historic Italian town. It's really a village. There are not that many residents. I think only around 50, 60 residents maybe. And there's also often another reason why people are not willing to invest in these properties. They are located quite off the grid, not in very touristic areas. But we can still see the beauty of DK. The floor over there, covered in moss. Let's have a glimpse over here, but I think I see a balcony. Yeah, there was once a balcony. And they had a huge garden all around the place. A lot of glass, some windows are smashed. It's doing a lot of harm to the place. But apparently nobody seems to care anymore. Otherwise you would definitely make sure to keep your property away from any leakage problems. Well, yeah, as I told you, most of the rooms are empty. The best room on this floor still has to come. It's the last one. Like they say, last best. It's true. By the way, I'm not rushing at all, but I just do not want to spend more time than necessary, you know? Because this room is beautiful. We have a wonderful wooden Italian bed. And this is another huge room. Also beautiful wooden ceiling. There's one of those other benches that used to stand in the church, I believe. Although it could also have been for the castle uh, or palace itself. And then have a look at this. All the ivy is just growing inside. Those are all just roofs over here. Dang, it's completely swallowing up this room. Quite fascinating to see how strong Mother Nature actually is. I really love the bed. Typical Italian with its wooden carvings and shape. We have a little cross of Jesus Christ in the middle.
And lastly, we can go another floor upstairs. As I told you, this palace is quite large in size. There is also a tower. And I wish I could access it. I actually attempted it, but it's way too dangerous. I nearly sank through the wooden stairs. A lot of pigeon droppings over here. And on the main scene they've placed to prevent the roof from falling down. That's a good thing to do. Well, I'm just walking over pigeon droppings right now. Dang. Floor is feeling very weak at this point. And the very last part I can show you inside are these stairs we are going up. All the way up into the tower. And those are the stairs I attempted to walk on. I was standing there and it started cracking. Imagine if I'm standing there and I fall down. I would break my leg and the Italy series would be completely finished. So I hope you can understand it. I did not walk up these stairs, even though you know I'm also a big fan of heights. I do not want to risk breaking a leg or something, you know? I love exploring way too much to cancel this Italy trip before even being finished. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna sit down here for a bit. And I really want to thank you for watching to another place in Italy. Despite it was maybe a little bit more empty than other places we normally show, I hope you still appreciated that I took my efforts to document this place. And I also hope you love my insights and the tour together with me. And if you did, then you know the drill. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel down below, and also leave your opinion in the comment section right down below. If you want to support me on more travels all around the world, that's possible to a Patreon page and a PayPal. You can find both links down below in the video description. But of course, you're always free to watch these videos. You're very welcome. I want to thank you for watching another video, Explomo fam. And as always, we will see you on our next adventure. Peace out. Mm -hmm.